you should already be aware of some of the chronic pain mechanisms. So if I draw the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord, and from the spinal cord you have the peripheral nerves. This is one that's running into your pelvis. This is one that's running into your foot. And this may be one that's running into your back. Now, they have little nerve endings and receptors that respond to things like pressure, touch, stretch, heat, cold, and chemical changes like infections and inflammation. Now, these little nerve endings are capable of transmitting messages into the spinal cord where they synapse, and I'll explain what a synapse is, with a central nerve that passes a message onto the brain. Now, I will draw a synapse, and hopefully you've already been introduced to the concept of how synapses work. So the electrical signal that travels along the peripheral nerve will come to the end of the nerve in the back of the spinal cord and it needs to jump onto the central nerve to get up to the brain. Now it does that by releasing neurotransmitters or neurochemicals and on the other side we got receptors. Now this is quite a complex area that we don't fully understand but the receptors and the neurochemicals are very individual to you an individual to the environment and the thoughts and the feelings and what you're doing. Therefore, we often talk about this area as being the volume control, the amount of messages that are being let through. So I'm going to write volume control here. Ultimately, whatever messages are arriving at the top, the brain will work out what messages might be perceived as a threat to your tissues. Now, if the brain perceives a threat to your tissues, it will generate pain in the corresponding tissues. Now, hopefully this science should already be familiar to you, and I'm here to talk about the issues that are unique to the pelvis and the abdominal area. We call pain in the organs, which is specific to the pelvis and the abdominal area, visceral pain. Now, visceral pain tends to be a little bit more diffuse and difficult to locate. So therefore, the nerves that are coming from the pelvis tend to arrive at different areas along the spinal cord. Uh, it's therefore more difficult for your nervous system to detect exactly where the signals are coming from. So normally we're not aware of where our prostate is, of where our ovaries are, um, but if we get pain, all of these nerves can get activated. And studies have shown that in visceral pain, so pain from your organs, we often experience pain spreading or affecting other areas of our pelvis. So if we have pain in the bladder, often as time goes on and the pain becomes more chronic, you may find that you start to get pain in other areas such as your bowel, prostate, or perineal area, or indeed in muscles. Now that can be quite confusing for you, it can be confusing for your doctor, and it can be confusing for people around you. On the other hand, it gives us some treatment options because muscles are tissues that we can affect in different ways through movement, through stretch, and indeed through touch and massage. And in some circumstances, we can push on the muscle or inject the muscle. We can actually affect the nerves that may be arriving in the spinal cord and communicating the nerves to the initial area that was affected, like your bladder. And that can provide sometimes some short-term relief in people with things like bladder pain, pain in the perineal area or prostate pain. People will tell us that they often get problems with function. 
That could be bowel function, bladder function, or sexual function. That's unique to the pelvic area. Now, some of the things that people will tell us is that they need to go to the toilet more often. They're more sensitive, they cannot tolerate so much fluid in their bladder, for example, and they go to the toilet more often. But once they get to the toilet, they might not be able to go. Now, some of the mechanisms that we might talk about, and particularly as a physiotherapist I might address, are issues around muscle tension. So if the brain is perceiving a threat and you're getting more pain because your bladder is starting to fill and it's very sensitive, you may find that the brain will try and protect you by sending messages to your muscle to try and tighten up and protect you. Now, once you have tight muscles, that can become a bit of a vicious cycle that feeds in to the pain that's being perceived. And that means that sometimes people get problems letting go for bowel movement, bladder function and sexual activity. And again, what we do at the pain management center is try and facilitate a more calming effect on the nervous system that may facilitate more relaxation of the muscles. What can also be extremely confusing for patients, clinicians and people who are involved in their care is when they actually find some what we call local changes, when they actually find inflammation or inflammatory markers, inflammatory markers. That's often seen when you do a dipstick of your urine, for example. And those inflammatory markers tend to, or would normally be seen as a sign of an infection. But patients often tell us that antibiotics don't work, or the treatments they've been offered aren't reducing the sensations they're getting from their area, and they still have inflammatory markers in spite of the bacteria that's believed to be there being treated. Now, again, if we look at the central nervous system and its response to a perceived threat, means that the brain, if it thinks that your tissues are being damaged, is likely to facilitate the immune system, which is a system that facilitates healing, to kick in. And one of the stages of healing is inflammation. So the brain is capable of facilitating this process, which means that you might find inflammatory changes even though there's absolutely no bacteria or no harm being done to your bladder. Again, that can be very confusing and difficult to treat, but we are looking at responses in the nervous system. That means that pain doesn't actually mean any tissue damage. And at the pain management center, we work on managing the nervous system, and we're trying to focus on giving you a good understanding of what may be going on. And I hope that this talk has been useful in your future management.